Hi, my name is Kate Abrams, and today I will be presenting with Sofia Lopera Cardona on harnessing the power of surveillance testing on small residential college campuses. This study took place at Cornell College, a liberal arts school located in Mount Vernon, Iowa. We have a student population of around 1,000 students, over 90% of whom live on campus. Because Cornell College operates on a one course at a time plan, we saw an opportunity to design and implement a COVID mitigation strategy, which would increase the amount of in-person learning opportunities compared to semester plan institutions based on the reduced risk of spread of infectious disease. At Cornell, each course lasts three and a half weeks, at which point students take a few days off before starting a new class. Faculty teach at most one course each block, and classes are capped at 25 or fewer students who generally meet in a dedicated classroom that is not shared with other students. These small classes, combined with no overlap between classes, limits interaction between groups, thereby reducing risk for spread of infectious disease. This past summer, our research group worked on designing a testing strategy that would allow for the safe repopulation of campus in the fall. The goal was to design and implement a combined mitigation strategy and testing strategy in which each infected person on average infected less than one other person, also known as an r naught of less than one. Testing every person every week would not have been possible because of staffing and facilities limitations, as well as concerns regarding compliance. Students generally tend to stay in groups either by extracurricular activity class or otherwise. Thus, the testing strategy could focus on networks to monitor for asymptomatic disease. One factor that we had to consider when choosing a testing method was timeline for returning results. The longer the turnaround time, the higher the possibility for transmission from an infected asymptomatic individual to a healthy individual. The, the policy is that after testing, the individual is not allowed to interact with peers until they receive their results. This is not too demanding because the SOFIA-2 analyzer provides results in 15 minutes, which generally allows a tested person to receive an email notification of their disease status in under an hour. Now I will turn it over to my colleague, SOFIA. Thank you, Kay. Point-of-care tests became the focus of our attention due to their easy implementation. Here we have the three different point-of-care testing options we consider. The SOFIA antigen test, the option we settle on, has a high fa false positive rate compared to the other two tests, but with an initially reported 0% false positive rate and affordable equipment and per test prices, it turned out to be the best option for our school. For comparison, we present here the costs of other two common tests offered at Cornell College, the flu and strep A tests. Because we did not know which groups and interactions were likely to produce the highest spread of COVID-19, we created a stratified testing strategy. The three strata we created were contact level, residence hall floor, and employee status. In order to represent differences in COVID-19 risk, we established two categories for the contact level stratum, high contact groups and typical contact groups. The high contact group includes music groups, athletic teams, admission staff, and students and professors involved with in-person classes. Random sampling for testing of people within this group is more frequent than for the typical contact group. The high contact list is updated monthly as classes and activities change block to block. Students in the typical contact group are clustered by residence hall floor, then randomly sampled from the resulting clusters to determine disease spread within living environments. Employees are randomly sampled at a rate that varies depending on available testing slots for that week. Surveillance testing, along with other safety me measures, have allowed us to have in-person learning for many classes throughout the year 2020-2021. This has particularly benefited STEM and R students whose access to meaningful hands-on experiences has been limited during the pandemic. 
Other students in hybrid classes also had the option to spend some time in a physical classroom if they so desire. Overall, we've had a cumulative positive test rate for students of only 1.3% and 1.6% for faculty and staff. More recently, as positive test rates on campus fell to 0% and the disease prevalence in our local community has been very low, in-person events and activities have partially resumed. This graph presents uh, a comparison between Cornell College and our county's positive test rates from January to April. As seen here, outbreaks at Cornell College do not line up with outbreaks in Lynn County and vice versa. These observations will be elaborated on on our poster. Thank you very much.